Anderson, and I'm here uh, talking about restless leg syndrome and why I think for many of you this is something that's very mechanical. It has a lot more to do with tight nerve tunnels in the lower extremity than we ever used to think. I really don't think dopamine and iron are really the go-tos. Uh, I'm not denying they may contribute in some way, but I really think this video is primarily to help you entertain and kind of fill that gap of information maybe to help you really see physically that there's something going on with these nerves. And uh, I have with us today Russ and his wife, uh, Lisa. They come uh, actually from Belize. They're from Canada, but they live in Belize. And they're here, uh, learned about us on YouTube, probably saw videos like you're watching right now. And what I want to show you is this is one of the nerve tunnels. It's called superficial peritoneal nerve tunnels. And it's one of the primary tunnels that I think is implicated to create restless legs. And we oftentimes look with an ultrasound machine to show there's compression, but also helps me to plan surgery. So I know where to make my incision. I can usually make the incision look smaller by pre-planning by ultrasound. But in the course of doing these ultrasounds, we'll see this oftentimes. So here, here's the nerve, the superficial period of nerve. What I want to try to explain here is if you, let's have you pan down to the leg again, but this nerve comes down in, in this fashion along here. And as it's coming down, it's uh, under a fascial tissue. It's in a leg compartment. And as it's coming down, it's trying to get down to the foot to supply the skin. So if it's underneath the fascia and down in the area of the muscle, it gets closer and closer and closer to the fascia, which is right underneath the skin. And then at a certain point, down where this ultrasound machine is, it's going to travel from underneath that fascia to the outside of the fascia so that it can supply your skin. It has to be right there to supply the sensation on the top of the foot. So here, you can see, is the nerve. Nerve tissue is darker because it's got a lot of fat in it. It's called myelin. And if you look really closely, there's some little dark, little white specks. And those are actually the little nerve fibers within the nerve. And this white line above that is the fascia. Well, watch what happens to the nerve. I'm high up in the leg. And I'm now moving down, I'm going down towards the ankle, down towards the ankle, down towards the ankle. Watch, watch, watch what's happening here. That nerve becomes compressed. It's getting very flat and probably about that area where it's going to make its transition from underneath that fascia to the top of the fascia. But I think that's showing you physically that there's compression. And uh, I'm going to show you something that's kind of fun. If you could rest it, you can just move your foot up and down. Gently, and there's the nerve. You can see all that other tissue. That's muscle. And there's the nerve sitting right above the muscle. So let's have you relax. And Russ made a little comment just a while ago. He said, what? When I was doing this, it felt what? Well, you know, when you have RLS, and I think anyone who has it knows, yeah. feels that anxiety that builds that night. And I've always right. felt that it was uh, uh, physiological, not psychological. Right, the anxiety right. that you feel, and right. you just reproduce it by touching on the leg. So you start feeling an anxious, the like same anxiety. something's going to hit, something's going on down there, this isn't right. I want to get out of my skin, I want to get up and walk right now. Seriously? Really, yeah, it's not as bad as it gets at night, okay. but it's that same sensation. Mm -hmm. I've had people even jerk when this mm -hmm. happens. Yeah, I but like yours it. is more like, it's stimulating you to want to get up and move. Right, but yeah. you have to stay. Don't <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> <It'll> move. <laughs> That's really interesting. So anyway, I hope that was informative, everybody. I hope that gives you more faith that this can work for you, because that's a giant leap like Russ has taken to come here. People, you really need to understand this and embrace this idea. I know some of you have been out there waiting on somebody, I don't know, two months ago that had been waiting four, months, four years to come here. So, you know, and maybe it's not bad enough for you right now, but understand that when this is bad, this is something you really have to consider. I really think it's... Uh, it's exciting to be able to uh, show you this. And so one more thing I'm going to show real quick, uh, and we'll put this down for just a second, is this is what we basically are doing when we do surgery. If this is the nerve, the particular paper is the sheath above it. All we're doing is finding where that nerve pierces through the nerve, through the fascia, I should say, and then 
not like I'm doing with my fingers, but in a more controlled manner. <laughs> We're going up the leg and opening up the sheath that's over it. So that's what's getting rid of the pressure. That's how we open up the tongue. That's how we get rid of the pressure, and that's how we can really refresh the tongue. So that's it. So I uh, hope you appreciate that the information that you got, and uh, please consider reading my book. It's called The Perfect Night's Sleep. Uh, Russ has read it. <laughs> And it really helps you understand how I got to this point of helping people in this manner. And it gives you a little bit more faith that it can work for you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or maybe share this with other, other people that you might know that are suffering from this dreaded problem that affects you at night. So anyway, thank you for watching.